Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to solve problem 66 of chapter 5. The smooth uniform rod AB is supported by a ball and socket joint at A. So the, the support is ball and socket. That means that we have three reaction forces. This type of support allows rotation about all three axes, so we do not have any reaction moment. By support at A, wall at B, and cable BC. Determine the components of reaction at A, the tension in the cable, and the normal reaction at B if the rod has a mass of 20 kg. So in this problem, we are not neglecting the mass of the rod. The first step is to draw the free body diagram of our rod AB. And include all the loads that are applied on our rod. So we have a tension here, I'm going to call it FBC, and then I have reaction forces at A, so I have reaction force going up AZ, AY, and AX. So you can see that I have assumed positive reaction forces and at the end, if I get a negative value, that means that the direction that I assumed is incorrect. Another load that I have is the weight. I know the mass is 20 kg multiplied by 9.81. I will get 196.2 Newton. And also I have a normal force at B. Because the wall is on YZ plane, normal to the wall would be along X. So our force would be, FB would be along X direction. So I'm going to write all my forces in Cartesian form so I can write my summation of forces and, and moment. So I have my force A, which would be AX, I, AYJ, and AVK. I do not have the magnitude, but I know their direction. Then I have the force of the weight, which would be in the negative z direction, so negative 196.2k, and force b would be in x direction. Again, I don't have the magnitude, but I have the direction. And also, last but not least, the tension bc, fbc, that I don't have the magnitude, but I have, I have, I don't have the magnitude nor the direction angles but I can find it based on the unit vector, U, B, C. A unit vector is simply the position vector divided by its magnitude. And the position vector R, B, C is the coordinate of C minus the coordinate of uh, B. Therefore, I will have negative 0.894 F, B, C, J plus 0.44 FBC K. So now I have all my forces in Cartesian form. Now I can write my equation. I have three force equation and I'm going to get three moment equation. So we are start with summation of forces in X equals zero. So I have AX, that's one component that I have. My force FB is going to have a component in uh, I. And then the other two forces, FW and FBC, are not going to have any component. So the only two components that I have here are AX plus FB equals zero. So you can see I have two unknown with one equation, so I can't really uh, find any answer from this equation. Summation of forces in Y equals zero. So in Y, we do the same thing. We have the Y component here and uh, we have a y component here so i will write my components a y minus 0.894 fbc equal zero and a similar approach for z i have a z i have for fbc minus 196.2 equals zero. So in this set of equation, I have five unknowns. 
So I can't really find uh, the unknown V3 equation. So I need to write my moment equation as well. I can write summation of uh, moment about any point. But if I write it about point A, that simplifies my uh, equation because I get rid of force at A. So summation of moment at A would be zero. Let's go back and look at our free by diagram. If I take a moment at A, so I don't, these forces are not going to create any moment, but our force W, our force FB, and our force FBC are going to create a moment about point A. Because we are in 3D, we are going to use the 3D definition of moment, which is R cross F. So we have three forces, so we have three R cross F. Three position vectors and three forces. The first position vector is from A to G FW, where G is the center of gravity or center of our rod AB. The second one is towards the end from A to B, where force B is being applied. The second one is also A to B, where force BC is applied. And at the end, we get zero. But because the two position vectors here are the same, I can simplify that and then say it R A G cross F W, which is just the force of the weight, plus I'm going to factor A B cross F B plus F B C equal zero. Here we have noticed we need to find two position vectors. A, G, and A, B to be able to solve our problem. If we go to the problem statement again, we need to find a position vector here. If I call this G or A, G, another position vector from A to B, which would be R, A, B. I need these two position vector for my moment equation. So remember that for moment equation, we don't need to use any unit vector and simply we are using position vector. So RAB would be negative 1.5i from A to B plus J plus 2K, the unit is meter. And RAG negative 0.75i plus 0.5j plus k and the unit is meter now i have all my forces i can write my moment equation i have two r cross f so two cross product if you remember from the definition of cross product we have i j k the first row is i, j, k. The second row is the position vector. And the third row is our forces. So here, in the second row, I write r, a, g. So that would be r, a, g would go to the second row. So that would be uh, negative 0.75, 0.5, and one and the third row would be my fw which would be zero zero negative one ninety six point two here for the second cross product that would be r a b so negative one point five one two and then the third row would be the combination of the two forces fb plus fbc so i have fb here FBC has two components in J and K. That would be negative 0.89 FBC and would be 0.44 uh, FBC equals zero. If I expand this cross product and solve it, I will get a vector. I will get a vector for the first cross product. I will get a vector for the second cross product. I will add them together to get the final vector. So for the first one would be, if you do the cross product, would be negative 98.1i minus 
147.15J. And for the second cross product, you have 0.44 FBC plus 1.788 FBC I. Then we have 66 FBC minus 2 F B J and also we have the K component 1.34 FBC minus FB K equal zero. So the first one was for the first cross product and then the second vector is for the second cross product. So if the moment is zero, means this vector is zero. And when that vector is zero, means every component is zero. That means that the I component should be zero, the J component should be zero, and the K component would be zero. That means that we are gonna get three equation. If the I component is zero, that means that negative 98.1, the I component here, and also this component, when we add them together, they would be zero. 4, 4 FBC plus 1.788 FBC would be equal zero. The only unknown here is FBC. So one equation and one unknown. We find our first unknown, 44 Newton. So the second would be J. If you look at the J component, we have one J component here, we have a J component here. So we'll add them together, negative 147.15 plus 0.66 FBC plus 2 FB equals zero. You can see we already found FBC. So the only unknown would be FB that we can simply find that unknown as well. So FB would be 59 yet. And that's the second unknown that we found. That's true that we have to write six equation, but we don't have to simultaneously solve six equation and six unknown. You can see uh, from every equation we'll find one unknown. The third one would be K that is not gonna give us anything because we have five unknown, not six unknown. So one of the equation would be uh, redundant, but I'm just gonna write it here so you can see FBC minus FB equal zero. So we already found FB and FC, so it's not gonna give us anything. So after we find FB and FBC, we need to go back to our fourth equation. So if we have FB here, AX is simply would be the opposite of FB. So negative 59 Newton. So that means that the direction that we assumed for X was incorrect. So AX is towards the negative X. So from the second equation, we can find AY because we have the value of FBC. We can find AY to be 39.2 Newton. And from the third equation, we can find AZ to be 177 Newton. So we found two unknowns with moment equations and then three unknowns with fourth equations. So we can find all our unknowns.